hi guys welcome back to this african perspective thank you all for stopping by okay so today we're going to be checking out videos about taxes and a lot of topics about taxes without representation and also how the taxes how people actually tax the debt because that is what it is okay so that's what we're going to be checking out and listen to what people actually have to say it's a little bit of rant about what like the places that actually the taxes that americans are paying where they actually go to and how they feel like these taxes are not like they're not really doing what they were supposed to do okay so we're going to be checking out this video but before we get into this video i want to give a big shout out to tawanda for giving a four dollar super thanks thank you so much for supporting this channel god bless you i really appreciate you a lot make sure you please click the like button it really helps with the algorithm i appreciate that so much let's get right into it a uh, question for my american followers real quick are any of you familiar with taxation without representation if you failed history you're just not as american as you pretend to be don't worry i got you right taxation without representation is the entire basis of the american revolution you know that war we started so that we could break free from britain and be our own country like the entire premise of the united states constitution so essentially american colonists were so fed up with being overtaxed and underrepresented by british parliament that they incited an entire revolution and what was the catalyst to the american revolution that little thing we call the boston tea party they revolted against their government over a three percent tax on tea why am I bringing this up? You didn't ask? Don't worry. I'm going to answer anyways. How do you think the founding fathers of America would feel if they knew that the average American was paying roughly 50% of their income to various taxes? 50% of our income, so $920 billion can go to the military in 2023 alone. That is a real number reported on the collected tax revenue from the United States of America. 50% of our income in taxes, so 920 billion can go to the military? Now, I know what you're thinking, 50%? Where is she getting that number from? Even socialists and communists don't pay 50%. Americans definitely don't. Yes, you do. And we're going to fall down the rabbit hole of real numbers using my income, which is verifiable, to prove to you that you guys are being taxed at a 50% rate of the money that you make. Now, in the sake of being transparent, I am going to use real numbers here. Last year, as a mother of two children, meaning I have two dependents, I made $103,000 working a regular eight to five job on top of the fact I monetized my content creation and I get paid royalties off of the music I make. So I have multiple streams of income and I work while I'm not working to make $103,000 as a head of household, mother of two, which at present, given current inflation, puts me as a lower class American citizen. Now, even with me being head of household, mother of two, lower class American citizen, I still don't qualify for any subsidized assistance. Um, no health care, temporary assistance for needy families, food stamps, etc. So everything I'm paying is out of my own pocket. Everything. Cool. Fine. Now, buckle up for the fun part, because we're going to go ahead and talk about how we got to paying roughly 50% of our income to some variation of taxes. Now, out of my regular check, I pay 29% in payroll deductions. The payroll deductions start with my income tax, Medicare, Social Security. Then I also have to pay for my own private retirement because they're threatening to take away Social Security and my own private health care because I don't qualify for any type of subsidized assistance. So 29% of my check is immediately gone to income tax, health care and retirement. Now, as if 29% wasn't blatantly disrespectful enough, I have to allocate an additional $100 bi-weekly to pay additional income taxes because I'm 1099 for my content creation and my royalties. Then on top of that, I still ended up owing income taxes somehow, even with two dependents only making $103,000 and paying an extra $200 a month. But when you owe taxes to the American government, if you can't pay them in a lump sum, they charge you for setting up a payment plan. So now I'm paying $300 additional a month. So that's an additional $500 a month of my disposable income 
after I've already been taxed 29% going to the IRS for income taxes, which guess what? That boils down to $6,000, so roughly 5% of my income. Now we're at a staggering 34% just for income taxes, retirement, and health care. Well, 34% still isn't 50. Cool, cool story. Let's go ahead and talk property taxes now. I live in Cook County and property tax on average is 2.19% of the assessed market value of the home that you live in. And well, ever since hedge funds started buying up all of the single family homes, this has increased the market value of homes, driving the average home in America up to $300,000 for the assessed market value. What's that breakdown to on a yearly basis? Basis, about six to seven thousand dollars. So let's just go ahead and add another five percent of my income allocated to property taxes, bringing us to a staggering thirty nine percent. But wait, there's more. So on top of income tax, government health care, government retirement, private health care, private retirement, and property taxes, I also have to pay sales tax. Sales tax in Cook County is paid on every single thing you buy, which guess what? 10.25%, bringing me to a whopping 49.25% roughly speaking, of everything I make going to some version of taxes. So now that we're all on the same page, that overtaxation is absolutely a thing that all Americans are experiencing, can we talk about the lack of representation now? Because you would think, after paying 50% of my hard-earned American dollars, I would have something to show for it, but I don't. I don't have free health care. I don't even have affordable health care for that matter or options for affordable medicine. I don't have access to nutritional food. They won't give our public school children free lunches, which is honestly absurd. If they did, they're not healthy. You don't have some amazing quality of infrastructure. You don't even have access to media that isn't polarized and heavily propagated. You don't make a livable wage. You don't have affordable housing. You don't even have paid maternity leave. And they refuse to regulate the cost of college tuition, little alone the cost of daycare for working parents. So what do we have? What do we have? I'll tell you what we have. We have poison. We have propaganda. We have school shootings. And we got a fucking TikTok ban. That's what we get as Americans for our tax dollars. We get to watch other countries that do have free health care use our tax dollars to fund their wars. Over taxation without representation. The way people just sit down casually keep hearing that, oh, this amount of money has been given to this place, this amount of money has been given to this place, and, and it's like the whole places where that money has been given to and keep do getting donated to has been everywhere but to the people that actually paid that money and have been paying that, those taxes. It has been everywhere else. And it's like, if, you have, you, if you're doing all of this and you're not even getting any care, you're not getting any, um, people are literally starving and all those money could have helped, by all means, to have saved a lot of people's life, a lot of um, people who have been paying these taxes, a lot of people that are complaining and saying that they are poor, a lot of people that are struggling to even pay their rent, a lot of people that are homeless. I just found out those big stupid sports stadiums are paid for by our tax dollars and not by the NFL. Like I'm actually really stunned because I had no idea about this, but in all honesty, how are public taxes paying for a private building? You can't just go into that stadium and walk around like a public park, so it shouldn't be paid for by public taxes. And you guys know I had to bring the receipts. Look how much of our public taxpayers' dollars goes to private sports stadiums. 280 million Cincinnati Reds, 300 million Seattle Seahawks, 250 million St. Louis Cardinals. All this money could be going towards, I don't know, maybe helping the homeless crisis that's going on in San Diego. $275 million for a stadium when there's people sleeping in front of it on the ground. Hmm, that's odd. And I know some people are going to say, oh, because it helps with tourism and it brings money into the city. Well, that would make sense if there were people not sleeping on the sidewalks in most major cities in the United States. If there are not people in major cities in the United States who are facing food insecurities where they don't know where their next meal is going to come from. That would make sense, but that's not the case. The investment is not matching the reward. We as taxpayers are paying for these ginormous billion dollar bu buildings in the middle of our cities and we're not reaping any reward from them. But the NFL is taking in billions of dollars every single year in ticket sales. It's not adding up. That math don't math to me.
And why y'all distracted by everything else? I'm watching the news and I'm trying to understand why Congress keeps saying that Social Security is running out and by 2035, we're not going to have enough for everybody. That's not making sense to me. That math not mathing. Because we all are contributing to Social Security. Every time we get a paycheck, they're taking Social Security and Medicare out of our paychecks. So how is it running out? And I don't understand why it's going into a pool because you already know America don't give everybody their fair share. Honestly, the Social Security that I'm putting in should go into a trust for me. So when I'm 65, I get access to my trust, my money, whatever I put in, whatever work I did for from the age of 18 to 65 and the amount of money that I contributed to Social Security, that should go directly to me. It shouldn't go into a pool and then that money, if I put money into it and by the time I get to it, it's spent up, I don't get any of it. I think it has to do with the government misallocating funds as usual, taking all of our money, lumping it up into a big uh, bucket and taking out whatever they want to take out and then when it comes to actually giving the money back to the citizens and us having money for retirement, they're like, oh no, we don't have enough yet because y'all don't bottom out the goddamn cash back, giving money to different countries, putting money up for football stadiums putting money up for all this other stuff other than helping the american people i don't understand why social security does not go into a specific account for each american person the same way they know that what, how much money we owe to the irs is the same way they know how much money we've contributed to social security and everybody should get their share of whatever they've contributed to social security it should not go into no pool like that doesn't make sense and it doesn't make sense that they're saying that we're going to run out of social security if they're taking money out of everybody's paychecks every single day there's no day that they don't take social security out of somebody's paycheck and hey, y'all not find it weird that a country with 35 trillion dollars in debt is the one that's giving us a credit score make it make sense I am distracted by everything else. I'm watching the news and I'm trying to understand why Congress keeps saying that Social Security is running out. The money that we get taken out of our paychecks every single month that gets put into our Social Security is getting used right now. I'll show you. This is from the Social Security website, Understanding Your Benefits. The current Social Security system works like this. When you work, you pay taxes into Social Security. They then use that tax money to pay benefits of people who are already retired, have disabilities, survivors or workers who have died, or dependents and beneficiaries. The money you pay in taxes isn't held in a personal account for you to use when you get your benefits. We use your taxes to pay people who are getting benefits right now. Any of the unused money, which there isn't much of any, goes into a Social Security trust, not a personal account with your name on it. You may think the issue is the fact that boomers are retiring. That is not necessarily the case. A big part of the American working population is earning less than the Social Security trustees anticipated decades ago. So they anticipated that there would be a certain amount of money for when the boomers retired. And because of the income inequality and because such a large chunk of the nation's total income is held at the top and the income subject to payroll tax is capped at $160,000. As the rich have become richer, more and more of the total income earned by Americans has become concentrated only at the top. Therefore, more and more of this income earned is escaping the Social Security tax. Let's take a look at what the Social Security benefits calculator, calculator looks like for me, even looking to retire at the age of 67. This is the Social Security website, the benefits calculator. You can do, look at this quick calculator here. Put in your date of birth, your earning incomes per year. I put in $100,000 being generous because the majority of people may never see this. And then the year that I am able to retire is when I'm 67. That is in 2060. You have the option to look at today's dollars or inflated future dollars. But the fact that we're already behind and there isn't enough money, I'm going to keep it in today's dollars. Let's take a look at it. Retirement. Your estimated monthly benefit amount when I turn 87 is going to be $3,154. Right now, that amount, that amount of money per month in income is not even enough for people to live today. You work 40 hours a week for 40 years of your life to live off 40% of your income. And that's what this looks like. That's why people need to have individual policies for themselves set in place or investing into their own retirement separate from just depending on social security for retirement because in all honesty i don't believe that it's going to be there when we retire the value of money right now has been depreciating before our eyes before our very eyes and we can see how money for um, like before the amounts that used to be like something huge and you'd be like oh my god that's a lot of money and then all of a sudden it's so little like very little compared like you can't even afford a lot with it so imagine earning that kind of money 
this amount that that feels like it's nothing right now imagine that's what you're going to be getting as your benefit later in life like <laughs> what are you going to be doing that's literally just a chicken change like it's nothing it's like you're just going to be getting like your churn crumbs so you does that that definitely means that as as the way things are going as as we're seeing it there will be a lot of people who work for so long in their life they have to just keep working and maybe possibly decide to just not leave be alive by the time they retire maybe they are just ready to die there are some that their retirement plan is just to you know live for a few seconds after their retirement like they just want to die immediately because they have nothing to live for they have no money to live so life is literally very expensive don't get me wrong i love being single and i love living alone it's great it's fantastic but fuck it's expensive ah I just spent $600 on brakes on my car, just on the front part of the car, because I couldn't afford all four brakes and axles and rotors and whatever the fuck. And then now I just paid my car payment, which is $500, so I just blew $1,100 in like three hours, and it wasn't even like fun, you know? Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, it's just so overwhelming, like... You work and 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 it's just to pay off like your basic necessities. <laughs> ah! And you can't like in this city that I live in, public transport, please. If I were to do public transport, it's like asking to get raped and I really shouldn't be crying because now I have to go to another work event and now I'm going to be all puffy. <sighs> it. I'm just... Living is so expensive. Just keeping yourself alive and floating is so expensive. And what I was saying before I was rudely interrupted is if I were to take public transport here, especially for my job, my job requires a car. I have to have a bunch of shit that I have to lug with me for work. And I can't do that with public transport. I'm just, I'm venting. Inflation sucks. Just living in America sucks. Living alone sucks. It's great, but it sucks. Because you have to front all the expenses by yourself. I need a husband just so that I can live. <laughs> so we can split the bills. I just filed my taxes and guess who fucking owes? I used to work with this guy that doesn't file taxes. He never has and he never started. I asked him why. He said... If I don't file, they'll never know. And I'm like, didn't you first start filing? He's like, no, I never started. I never started the cycle. I'm like, dude, they're going to catch you. He's like, how are they going to catch me if I don't remind them that I exist? I, I don't think they're going to catch him, dude. <laughs> He's been doing this for 25 years. Have you ever wished that you can keep more of your hard-earned money instead of losing it to taxes? What if I told you there was a legal and ethical way to do just that? A way to significantly reduce your tax liability. It's called the 508C1A Trust. It's a special type of organization that is exempt from federal income tax. It's fully IRS compliant and can be a powerful tool to manage your wealth. By setting up a 508C1A Trust, you're not just saving on taxes. You're protecting your assets and securing your financial future. If you're ready to take control of your financial destiny, please like and follow and click the link in my bio and you can schedule a free 30-minute phone call with me. We are here to guide you every step of the way of setting up your 508C1A trust. Do you want to know why you're paying more in taxes? Because they gave all your money away and now they want more. Okay? They gave your money to Ukraine, just gave them all that money. They spent it on all those wars, all those wars around the world. They spent your money on all those wars. They are giving it to illegal immigrants, illegal aliens, and they're just giving them pocket money. Okay? Housing them, all that stuff. They're giving it to the Green New Deal, you know, those wackos that think CO2 is destroying the world and cow farts are destroying the earth. That's why you're paying more taxes. They spent all your money, and now they want more. 
<laughs> and then when you think about it, you'll be like, what is the benefit of all of this? What is the benefit of paying all these taxes that we are paying? Like, is there a benefit to it? Or are we just casually just paying it for what? And then you get some people who actually definitely want to argue with you and tell you, of course, there's a benefit. Of course, it is this and that. And it's like, can you just be more realistic and tell me what the benefit is? Like, where have, have you like experienced the benefit of these taxes that you're paying? Have you, are you literally seeing it on day to day basis actually being shown to you like, hey, this money you're paying, this is what we've done for you. This is what we've done for you. Like I said, you yourself, like it's just what have they done for you? It's a scam that's become so normalized that we don't even realize it's a scam anymore. I'll go first. Student. Oh, this one's easy. Vehicle registration. Let's take two seconds to unpack this because it makes no sense. So your employer pays you and they get taxed payroll taxes. Then you spend that income anywhere and you get taxed through income tax. Should you buy a vehicle, you're going to pay a sales tax on that vehicle. So why in the ever living fuck should I have to pay every year for a vehicle I already own? I bought my motorcycle in like 2010 and I still have to pay every year. 120, 130, whoever, whatever the hell. It's not only a scam, it's glorified revenue collection for the state. For big government where people sit around on their asses collecting a check. We need to get rid of the Department of Education, the Department of Transportation, so many of them. FDA, IRS, get the fuck rid of them. Too many parasites collecting money on our behalf for no reason. It's my vehicle, I should only pay when I transfer titles. My dad just called me and said that I owe $480 from my tax return because apparently if I just had 10 more dollars taken out of my check every single week, then I wouldn't owe anything at all. And I said, what? What? I owe money for working? I owe money for working because, yeah. And also, dad, that sounds like a scam. You are telling me that if only 10 more dollars every week came out, then I wouldn't owe the $480? How was I supposed to know that? First of all, how am I supposed to know that? Second of all, who am I, how do I control that? And what? And why is that a thing? How do you how do you tell your employer, oh, take ten more dollars out of my paycheck every week so that I don't owe money when my tax return is done? What? What? This is this is strange. This is strange. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching this video to the end. I really appreciate you. Please don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, and hit the notification bell to get notified every time I post a new video. And also leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. I would love to see what you think about this video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.